To understand graph neural networks, we need to introduce graphs, graph signals, and graph convolutional filters. Let us begin by discussing graphs. This video is mostly about the introduction of notation. A graph G is a triplet made up of a set of vertices V, a set of edges E, and a set of weights W. Vertices, or nodes, are simply a set of n labels, where n represents the total number of nodes in the graph. Typically, labels are the natural numbers from 1 through n, like in this figure, where nodes are labeled 1 through 8. Edges are ordered pairs of labels of the form i, j, where we emphasize the ordering is important. In graph signal processing, we interpret the presence of the edge ij in the edge set as a statement that node i can be influenced by node j. We denote this influence with pointed arrows. For instance, node 2 can influence node 1, and node 1 has influence over node 3. Weights wij are numbers that are associated to edges. The weights are interpreted as a representation of the strength of the influence that node j has on node i. The larger the weight, the larger the influence. In the diagram, this is represented with numbers associated to each edge. If w12 is larger than w31, it means that the influence 2 has on 1 is larger than the influence 1 has on 3. Only edges have weights associated. There are no weights if the pair is not present in the edge set. Let me repeat that the edge ij is graphically represented by an arrow that points from node j into node i, and that this arrow stands in for the fact that node j can have some influence on node i. I am repeating this because it is the opposite convention that is common in graph theory. This convention simplifies notation when we define graph shift operators. Graphs are classified as directed or symmetric, depending on the symmetry of the edge and weight sets. In a directed graph, the edge ij is different from the edge ji. It is possible to have ij be part of the edge set, whereas ji is not part of the edge set. For instance, in the figure below, there are arrows pointing from node 2 into 4 and from node 6 into 4 but there are no arrows pointing from 4 into either 2 or 6. If both edges are part of the edge set, it is still possible to have a difference in the weights. That is, if ij and ji are both in the edge set, we can have wij and wji be different. In this example graph, we have arrows connecting 3 to 5 in both directions, and we also have arrows connecting 5 to 7 in both directions. If the graph is directed, however, the weight that connects 3 to 5 can be different from the weight that connects 5 to 3. The same holds true for the weights that connect 5 and 7. They can be different. When there is no directionality on edges or weights, the graph is said to be symmetric. For this to happen, the edge and the weight set must be symmetric to index transpositions. More precisely, edges must come in pairs. Whenever we have ij being part of the edge set, we must have that ji is also part of the edge set. In this representative graph, an arrow pointing from 3 to 5 implies that we must have the opposite arrow pointing from 5 into 3. In addition to edges being symmetric, weights have to be symmetric as well. We must have that wij and wji are the same. In this particular graph, the weight n53 must be equal to the weight w35. This is something that we can signify with a double pointed arrow and a single weight. If all edges are connected in both directions, with all weights being symmetric, as is shown here, the graph is symmetric. Weights are not always necessary. 
when a graph doesn't have weights, we say that it is unweighted. Sometimes it is convenient to equivalently interpret an unweighted graph as one in which the weights are units. That is, one in which wij is one for all edges in the edge set. Unweighted graphs can also be directed, as the one we are showing below, or undirected or symmetric, as the one we are showing now. Graphs can be directed or symmetric, and they can be weighted or unweighted. These are separate classes. The four combinations are possible. Most of the graphs that we encounter in practice are symmetric and weighted. This will be the case in the problems we will study in the labs.